Hello and welcome to this quick video on how to set up CRSF receivers on something like a Pixhawk. This just happens to be the Pixhawk 5X from Holybro, but it's the same for any flight controllers that's running RD Pilot. Now I've got my old trusty Serranus uh, with a full size crossfire here in the back. As you can see from the fact that the light is green on the back of here and the light is green on the little nano receiver, if I just overlay the screen here. Here we are looking at the receiver calibration. As I move the controls around, there they are all moving. Now back on the bench, the other really cool thing about this, if I go into the telemetry page, I'm also getting all of the telemetry coming back as well. So something like the Yapu telemetry script I could use on here. So I've got my telemetry coming back down onto the radio and I've got my radio control stuff going into the flight controller. Now there are some gotchas with this, which is why I'm making the video specifically for a Patreon of mine who sent me a message and said, oh, I'm having a bit of trouble. So I thought, well, I've got this stuff on the bench, let's put it all together and I'll show you how it works and what you do because looking at the documentation, it should be slightly easier than it is. Now, the other big thing, of course, with CRSF is that CRSF, the protocol, which is what this little receiver is talking to the flight controller with and also sending telemetry back via, is also used in things like the Express LRS project or ELRS. So this works the same. Yeah, almost. So there are a number of handy things to figure out when you're doing this. Let's go through some of the basics. So first of all, let's go and have a look at the documentation page on rdpilot.org for the TBS setup. All of these links, don't worry, will all be down below in the video description. Now this basically says that you plug it into a spare UART on the flight controller you set the protocol for 23 for whichever UART it's plugged in on and you set the RSSI type to be 3. And then you can also look at the stuff in RD Pilot for uh, Crossfire Telemetry and that says that you have to set one thing for Crossfire Telemetry and that you set the RC options as bit 8 and it all works. And that's kind of what I've done. If I go into Mission Planner and go into configuration and then go into full parameter tree. I've got, if I go back on the desk, the little receiver here plugged into telemetry three port. Now, initially I plugged it into UART4 and couldn't get this to work for love and money. And this seems to be that you need a UART with DMA or direct memory access. If it doesn't, it seems to really struggle with this. So we need to figure out which port we're actually plugged into on the flight controller. Uh, so I am in telemetry three. So if we just jump very quickly back onto the internet and we look at the Pixhawk five pinouts, oops, the five controller, there we go, it's even better. So we're plugged into telemetry three, which is this one. You can see that the UART mapping or how the UARTs, the serial UARTs relate to the physical devices here on the right hand side, we can see that telemetry three that we're actually plugged into is serial five. So you can kind of see it there on the screen. Not super obvious this, this is a little bit of the fun with Pixhawk is that you have to kind of um, do the documentations to figure out all how the mapping works. Now we know it's serial 5, if you remember we needed to set the serial protocol to 23, so it's serial 5 we're after. In the full parameter li list, if I search for serial 5, I set the serial protocol that I want for 23 and hit enter and then click right. Okay. It won't set the RSSI type, as it says also on this page, RSSI type to 3. Then I need to go into here in the full parameter list and search for RSSI type set to 3. So this is all you have to do. However, there are some pretty big gotchas in this. As I said, when I first tried this out, I actually had the receiver plugged into UART4 and UART4 would not work. The other common mistake that I'm seeing lots of people make 
is to make sure that the transmit and receive pins are connected the right way round. Now you can configure whichever pins you want on something like a crosswire receiver to be the CRSF transmit and receive pins. So if we just hold um, and just go into the crossfire Lua script on here, doing it on this radio feels very old school now. We can see here that we not only have the crossfire transmitter, we have the crossfire receiver set, but also we also have the ability over CRSF with crossfire to talk to Ardu plane as well. So we can actually go in and change things like the PID settings. This is one of the really fantastic things about the CRSF protocol. It actually builds the menu system dynamically depending on what is connected. It's one of the reasons why things like the ELRS project just basically pinch the whole idea. But if we look at the Crossfire receiver nano configuration, we can see that output one is the crossfire transmit pin, output two is the crossfire receive pin. So the pin that is transmit on here has to go to the, re the receivers are very close to each other, the aerials. Um, the transmit pin for output one needs to go to the receive pin on the UART. Now, how do we find that out? Well, again, on the computer, things like the Arduino Pilot documentation is your friend. If we look at the pinout, you can see here and again, all the links to all this stuff is down below. We can see that the telemetry ports are set as pin one is VCC, which is the red pin. By the side of the red pin is the transmit pin, then the receive pin, and then the other end is the ground. So on the bench, you can see here, I have the red pin and the black pin are powering the receiver. And then the transmit pin here on the PIX hook goes to the CRSF receive pin on the receiver and vice versa and that is the other common mistake so if you are struggling with this there is a very good chance that what you have done is either plugged your uh, receiver into one of the ports that doesn't have dma access which is going to be part of the problem or you've got the receive and transmit pin the wrong way around or you've gone in and accidentally set up the wrong serial port at, with the bits you need for CRSF. So for example, this had to be the serial five protocol had to be 23. And that's because in the mapping, we found out that the way it works is that the mapping for UART or telemetry three is serial five. And that's the key number, the number five. That's how we ended up with serial five. Hopefully that helps for those of you that are struggling with this. CRSF is a fantastic way to talk to a Pixhawk flight controller. It does use one of the UARTs on the, uh, on the board, but using it, it not only allows you to do things like, as I said, set up things like your transmitter and your receiver, but you can also do fantastic things like you can actually get and, and also change all of the settings in the flight controller via the TBS stuff on your radio too. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.